This week is one of Microsoft Fabric's semi-annual conferences, and it's at these conferences that they release their biggest and their best features for both Microsoft Power BI and Microsoft Fabric. And yesterday, Microsoft released the September 2025 version of Microsoft Power BI and talked about some of its new features at this conference. And boy, oh boy, they were, they were big. Uh, I'm going to be making videos over the next few weeks and months as I learn how to use these new features. So shout out, subscribe for that. However, I did want to just hop on and kind of give my first impressions of this new release. So like always, they released a blog where they talked about the new features and you can go ahead and you can read that to learn about all of them. However, in kind of going through this and playing around with the new features, I came up with three that I think are kind of the biggest de you know, biggest deal of the bunch. I categorize these as one, the most immediately useful feature to me, which might be different to you, but the most, what I would consider the most immediately useful. Two, the most transformative feature. And then three, the best incremental improvement. And then I have one feature that is a honorable mention. So let me walk you through those features, starting out with what I think is the most immediately useful feature of the September 2025 release. And that is the ability to set a custom calendar so that you can use all of the DAX time intelligence functions if you have a unusual calendar. So the way that you can do this is you can go over into the table view, you can go over into your custom uh, date table, you can select the table name, and then you can go ahead and you can click this calendar options button. Now, what this allows you to do is this allows you to create a custom calendar. So a lot of companies have custom fiscal calendars. So I could name this fiscal calendar. You can then uh, go over here, click add category, and then you can set a column that represents that custom calendar. Uh, you know, that custom calendars quarter, that custom calendars year, so on and so forth. Then when you use DAX time intelligence functions, so like for example, if I go over here and I go new measure and I go um, same period last year, I can then use my custom created calendar in that time intelligence function. Now for someone that uh, is constantly dealing with custom calendars, both uh, fiscal as well as at my time at Nike and Adidas retail calendars. This is a game changer because I actually, I never uh, bothered to learn many of the DAX time intelligence functions because I always worked in businesses that operated under different calendars other than just kind of the standard calendar. So I think this feature is going to immediately unlock a ton of functionality for me because I no longer have to use things like date offset columns uh, in any new report that I'm building moving forward. Instead, I can just basically import my custom calendar, define it, and then uh, use the existing time intelligence functions. I am going to have to learn them because I haven't used them that often. Uh, but that is something I'm looking forward to, and that is an immediate improvement in my day-to-day -day, uh, development of new reports, which then brings me to what I think is the most transformative feature that was announced, which is DAX user-defined functions. Now, this is what everyone is talking about on the Reddit forums. This is what everyone is talking about on LinkedIn. Um, and I do agree it is transformative. I am still very much processing what they mean for the Power BI reports um, and if companies are not going to be maintaining repositories of custom functions, uh, how that kind of changes things, right? Because the average Power BI developer isn't probably writing their own custom functions. So I, I'm still kind of thinking through like, okay, how is this going to actually operationalize across like a large business? That said, the way that you can create them is either via DAX query view. So you can go into DAX query view and you can highlight a function and you can go update with changes or using TMDL. If we go into DAX query view, we can see uh, 
this one that I wrote right here, which takes a table and it sums that table uh, and the column amount and then returns it. So if I go ahead and run this, right, you can see it's using that function and it's returning 60, which is the sum of 10, 20, and 30. Uh, if you follow this YouTube channel, just know that involves something called scalar variables, and I am going to mispronounce that all the time. My friend Colin already texted me about the short I released yesterday, and uh, yeah, I'm going to struggle to pronounce uh, scalar. Just be aware of that. One other thing just to note about UDFs is they also have some features around what they're calling lazy execution. A similar concept exists with Spark. So I am kind of familiar with it, but I need to do a lot more, I think, thinking and playing around with them before I'm ready to make a video or a tutorial. Uh, I do think, I, I think they're transformative. I'm still processing how they're gonna actually impact my day-to-day -day life. One thing that I did notice, uh, that would be a way they might kind of change the way that you or I work with Microsoft Power BI though, is that uh, people are starting to release like libraries kind of similar to Python modules of functions that they've written. So I think there was a guy named Jake Dudley who just released a collection of DAX functions meant to work with hex color codes. Um, and he published those on SQL BI. And I think if we start to see people doing more and more stuff like that, this potentially could have a huge impact on uh, how the average person is interacting with DAX, right? Because I think similar to Python, the same way the average person probably isn't writing their own Python modules, the average person probably won't be writing their own DAX user-defined functions. Um, with that said, though, I'm going to trans kind of move on to what I think might be the most incremental improvement. And this is kind of the third feature that I've identified. Uh, and it's not going to transform the way that you work with Microsoft Power BI. Uh, you know, we could do this kind of stuff before using third party tools or using code, but you can now go ahead and you can now refresh uh, either just the schema or just the data within a table. And this is kind of a a nice to have, right? Like, like we could do this before, but this is just shows that, that kind of these little tiny tweaks and these little kind of development tools are constantly evolving. Um, and I was just really happy to see this feature kind of come in to Microsoft Power BI desktop this month. With that said, I do have one final honorable mention of a feature, which is that you can now download XMLA, uh, locked Power BI files from the service. So if you're using incremental refresh and logging into it with like SSMS or modifying it via some kind of code, you can now go ahead and download a locked file. So that's my honorable mention. I have made videos on how you could do that, but they were always kind of hacky and a little bit like workaroundy. Now in the Microsoft Power BI service, you can just go ahead and you can just click that download button. So with all that said, those are my top three features from the September Power BI release and one bonus feature. Let me know down in the video comments if you agree or if you have any features that you liked more than the ones that I mentioned in this video because there were a lot released. Uh, if you are interested in business intelligence, typically I make videos on Microsoft Power BI and Fabric and a little bit of Databricks and a little bit of like, hey, I think this is really cool. But uh, if you're interested in any of that, and if you want to see me continue to explore some of these new features, subscribe and like this video. With that said, I hope you have a good rest of your day, and I hope you learned something today.